He sends as vessels to pour into our lives. We looked this morning at Galatians chapter 6, and I want to see one thing there again today as we prepare our hearts to honor the Lord as we honor Sister Pat. This is not the time for tithe. Uh, this is the time for us to give an offering to this ministry. And so that's specifically what this offering is for. Our church has prepared an honorarium for her, but this is above that honorarium because I know there are some projects that she has that she's uh, believing for a paid off flow in, and we want to be a part of sowing into that. We have opportunity tonight. And that's what it says here in Galatians. It speaks of the opportunity that we have. It begins in verse six. It says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. The word communicate is a two-way street. It's a verb that talks about giving and receiving. We're receiving of the word. We're receiving of, of a divine flow of the Holy Spirit tonight. We're receiving of an anointing that has been um, um, developed in this woman of God through years of faithful serving the Lord. And so we're going to receive tonight. And it says that we are to communicate. And then it begins to give us some insight into what that communicate communication does for us. It says that God is not mocked. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. So it takes our communication and places it in the form of a seed. That we're not just donating into an organization, but we are sowing into a kingdom work through Pat Harrison's ministries. And so it is seed. And he says there's a harvest connected with what we're about to do. He then says that it's a spiritual seed because verse 8 says, He that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap. So it's not just a financial seed. Through this financial seed, we have the ability to sow into the work of the Spirit, the flow of the Spirit, and reap out of that ground. And then in verse 9, it says that it's well-doing. And then verse 10 says that we have opportunity to do good. So as we understand that, and that's just a recap of what we looked at this morning, but I wanted you to see that word communicate because I want to look over at Philippians chapter 4. And when we recognize this word here, communicate, in Philippians chapter 4, we see that it is, again, making reference to a giving and a receiving. In chapter 4 and verse 15, the Apostle Paul said, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. So he uses this same word communicated that we saw in Galatians chapter 6 and again makes a reference to there's a receiving. We know we're going to receive of the word tonight and that word is an eternal word. We're going to, because the word of God is eternal. And so that word is going to go into our hearts and it's going to give us light. We've already received, for those of you who were here this morning, we've received light. For those of you who've received from, from the Word and you've seen how the Word has helped to shape your, your, your life and it begins to give you structure to your life. So this giving and the receiving uh, is a part of what God has designed for us to have an a participation in or, or a, um, a, a part in. We have a part in what Sister Pat Harrison is doing in the body of Christ. Through our seed tonight, we're going to receive, but we also get to have an eternal uh, connection to what her ministry goes on from this place to do through the seed that we're able to sow into her life tonight. It says that in verse 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Fruit that may abound to your account. When we recognize that God gives us opportunities to sow, not because he has a need that he can't meet. You know, God was able to feed the prophet at the brook. 
He had, he had birds that were flying in a meal daily to the prophet. He, God, didn't have, God didn't run out of birds that could have supplied for the man of God. But there was someone who needed a harvest and the man of God became ground for that widow to sow into so that she could have the harvest that she needed. And so, so Sister Pat Harrison's ministry, God is the source and the supply of her ministry. He didn't bring her ministry here so that we could support her because he is out of uh, funds. He brought her here so that we could have some ground to sow into because he's trying to get a harvest to us. There's some things that we need, and this ground becomes an, a place that contains the ingredients that are going to bring that harvest forth in our life. So we're thankful tonight. We're thankful that God has brought her ministry here, that he has given us a divine relationship, that she's a friend of this house. So she's not just coming in without a relationship to speak to us as people who are strangers, but she comes in and she speaks to us out of a flow of the years of the relationship that we've had with her, the prayers that she's prayed for this church family, the times we flowed in the spirit here. And as she ministers, she ministers to us from a place of relationship. Hallelujah. And so we get to sow into that tonight. As we prepare tonight, I want to encourage you that this is because God desires fruit that abounds to your account. God's never discussed an offering with anybody because he's trying to take it from us. Every time he speaks to you about an offering, it's because he's trying to get something to you. And this is the way to get things multiplied into your life. Without the ability to sow a seed, there is no multiplication. Hallelujah. But when we sow, God's blessing begins to work and the blessing multiplies. It multiplies seed sown and God gives seed to the sower and then he multiplies the seed sown and then he even provides bread while we're waiting on the harvest to come in. So as we're so honored tonight to have this opportunity to do good, I encourage you to prepare your heart because we want to sow uh, um, abundantly because we want to reap abundantly of what God has in store for us. Sister Pat Harrison's ministry did just uh, um, obtain a new ministry vehicle. And I know that's one of the things that she's believing for that, the final uh, portion of that to be paid in full. And I want her to go away from this place knowing that we are a part of what she's doing in the body of Christ. So let's sow into this ministry tonight, knowing that God is going to multiply back into our lives. If you're giving by text to give FBIC special plus whatever dollar amount to the number 28. 950. We also have an opportunity on buildfaith.net that you can use a drop down link in the uh, giving column there on the uh, menu bar of the website. And if you're here in the sanctuary, we have an offering envelope available in the pocket of the chair in front of you. If you're on the front row and you need an envelope, just lift your hands and the ushers can help you tonight. As we prepare to give, if everyone's ready, would you stand with me to your feet? Hallelujah, and come rejoicing. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity that we get to be a part of what Sister Pat Harrison is doing in the body of Christ, that we sow tonight knowing that you will be honored, you will be glorified, and you will bring an abundant supply into our lives as we make a supply available to her ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Father, we lift up these offerings that represent our heart to you. Lord, we love you with all of our heart. We put you first and we put your ways first. And Lord, let these offerings bring glory to your name and bring a supply to your woman of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, gentlemen. Hallelujah. You may be uh, seated for just a moment. 
I want to say thank you to my friends, the Hernandezes, Pastor Hernandez and Pastor Maria. Uh, gracias por venir. Es un placer tenerles and su, y su familia también. What a blessing it is always. And the divine connections that God gives us in the body of Christ are without price. We are so thankful for, um, for our company. Praise God. We love you very much. So. Thank you for being here, and thank you all for being here with hungry hearts to receive tonight. And I want you to have ears to hear. I want you to pull on the revelation because the more that we uh, grab a hold of what God has for us, the easier it makes it for her to deliver it to us. So we, we have ears to hear tonight. Dr. Pat, thank you so much for being here. Would you welcome the ministry gift of Dr. Pat Harrison to the house tonight? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you have the privilege to worship the Lord? Yes. Amen, I am. Yes. I'm so grateful to be here, so thankful. You can be seated. Thank you, Pastor, for having me, receiving my gifts. I appreciate it. And we had a good time this morning, didn't we? Yes. Hallelujah. God is always faithful and he's always good. I don't need to take my necklace off. <laughs> I, I can see him over there talking. <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> it's so pretty. Let's try just to move the microphone over a tad. Okay. All right. Maybe we're fixed. <laughs> Praise. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Sit straight. Don't move around. <laughs> you know how hard that is to do? <laughs> I can take it off if I have to. You all can tell me if I need to. <clears throat> it's up to you. You're the boss about that kind of stuff, not me. <laughs> yeah, we don't want it banging. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now we won't be making noise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord forever. I'm just grateful. Amen. Grateful. So grateful for the Father God and His goodness, His greatness. He's so faithful. Amen. And <clears throat> I want us to have... Hearts open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight. Um, I was telling Pastor Michelle, I don't exactly know what the Spirit of God's going to do, but or what He wants to do. But um, we're just going to listen, listen and obey and follow forth. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your goodness and your greatness. <laughs> we're so grateful, Father God, that you are such a faithful, faithful Father. We thank you for this time, Father. I thank you, Father, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. We take heed, we take hold, and we leave here changed because of the Word and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, um, last month we had our um, annual conference for FCF in... Um, as I was preparing for that, <clears throat> our theme was bridge, bridge builders uh, because we want to reach every generation and we're to build on each generation. You know, uh, <clears throat> we build on the word of God. You know, the word says line upon line, precept upon precept. So in, <clears throat> in our tra training and our teaching, each generation has a part in that building and that growing. We don't let go of the last generation, but we take what we learn from that and we add to what God is saying in this time. Yes. 
<clears throat> and we keep moving forward. <clears throat> and as we do that, we're growing, staying in the will of God and the move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I was looking at that, and it was talking about bridge builders, and the Spirit of the Lord said to me, well, you know, the Holy Spirit is a bridge for every generation. And that's true. The Holy Spirit is a bridge for every generation. <clears throat> and um, I was um, dwelling on that and thinking about that and thinking about the Holy Spirit and just meditating on the Holy Spirit. And um, the Lord took me to Genesis, the first chapter, and the second verse, and it says... The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, that's talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And when you look at the word hovering, it denotes sweeping or moving rather than staying still or stationary. So the Holy Spirit, to me, is the executive arm of the Trinity, <clears throat> so he was quite active as God spoke each word in the beginning. And when you look at the word executive, it means having the power to put plans, actions, or laws into effect. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, he has that power. So when God said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit hovering went into action and there was light. Why did that happen? Because God is a God of faith and he believes what he speaks for shall come to pass. The Holy Spirit is the action behind the Father's will. So when God speaks forth his will, the Holy Spirit sees that it happens. Hallelujah. So when the Spirit of God speaks in our life, I mean, when the Father God speaks in our life and gives us direction, the Holy Spirit is there to bring it into full play as his action of the, whole, of the will of God in our lives. But we have to take hold of that and believe that he will do it and he is doing it. Amen? <clears throat> and we've heard this many times. You know, I heard it the first time from my father. <laughs> he said, the power to bring something forth proceeds from the Father. The power to arrange it comes from the Son. And the power to perfect it comes from the Holy Spirit. And you look at the word arrange, and that means to place in proper uh, desired order, to put into proper, proper relationship, to make proper adjustment. So you can see by that, <clears throat> then that <clears throat> the power uh, of the, to arrange it comes from the Son. So you can see by that, he's the one that puts it in the proper desired order or the proper place or in the proper relationship or the proper adjustment. And it's the Holy Spirit that puts those plans, those uh, actions into um, effect in our lives. Hallelujah. I like that. Yes. So you can see then that Jesus wills it and speaks it. I mean, fa the Father wills it and speaks it. Jesus puts it in the proper desired order and the Holy Spirit puts it into action. Amen. I like that, don't you? And it's, it's, we need to see and understand how the Holy Spirit works because he's just not there to be there, you know? Just like Jesus is not there and the Father is not there just to be there. They all have parts in their place. And the Father is the one that's the creator first and foremost. Let me say this to you. Because we are in his kingdom and because we are of him, then we have that same quality within us to create because he gave it to us with his word. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what we do is we speak forth the word of God that we believe by faith. 
Jesus puts it in the proper place in our life and the Holy Spirit comes forth with his action and causes it to happen and be effective in our life. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise I love the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I love to talk about him. I love to minister to him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's talk about the Holy Spirit a little more. Let's go over to John 14. And we're going to read the 16th and the 17th verses. <clears throat> and he says this, and this is Jesus talking. He says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Hallelujah. He dwells in us and he will be in us. <laughs> and he will teach us all things. And he will bring to remembrance the things that we have, we have learned and take the time to study and grow and, and, and take hold of. He will remind us of those words in time of need. That's part of the helper. And I forgot my phone. If you will bring it up to me, please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I uh, I want to read this. Sorry. Thank you. I want to read this out of the Amplified. And verse 26, I want to read I mean, not verse 20. Yes, that's, well, first I want to read these out of, let me go up to, up to out of the Amplified, then we'll go down to 26. Let me find it. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. So if he's a spirit of truth when he speaks to you, he's only going to speak truth to you because he is the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then you go down to verse 26. And he says, but the counselor, comforter, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. And he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, and bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. And uh, then it goes on and starts about what we talked about this morning. Peace. Isn't that right? Peace I leave with you, he said. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what we need to see is Jesus left the Holy Spirit here. And he said he is one like me. Hallelujah, that means he's like the Father. He does what the Father says. Amen. He's a spirit of truth. He only speaks truth to us. And he always presents Jesus. Hallelujah. So what I want, would encourage you to do is look in the Amplified and look up the meaning of each one of these words. Counselor, comforter, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. And meditate on that. That will bring you into a place where you won't hardly be able to sit still. <laughs> because you're recognizing who all the Holy Spirit is in you, with you, and for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. All the time. Yes. All the time. Yes. And he's always acting on the behalf of the Father. And you've heard me say this many times. The Holy Spirit's always speaking. We're just not always listening. Amen. We're too busy with life, you know. We get busy with busyness. And it's not that 
some of it is not okay, but some of it's just busyness we make up for our, for ourselves. We think we have to be busy all the time. <laughs> so I want us to um, think about that, and I want us to dwell on that. I want us to meditate on that, on the Holy Spirit, and how important it is in our life. And another thing that's important in our life is speaking in tongues. The, the Word of God says in Acts that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when you receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you will receive what? The fullness. Well, I'm paraphrasing, sorry. You can't tell me when I'm paraphrasing, can you? <laughs> but what he says is we will speak in a tongue. And that tongue is the result of us receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But that tongue is for purpose. Speaking in tongues is to keep us edified, to keep us aware that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us and he is there with all of his power to work on our behalf, to do whatever we need, anytime. We just have to call on him. Sometimes I think we as believers, I'll put it this way, believing believers are too quiet. We don't speak up when we need to speak up. We need to speak up. And when you pray in tongues, you have that boldness within you to speak up with what God is saying and what God is desiring in your life and, and in others' lives as well. And I think that... Uh, we need to recognize that and understand how important praying in tongues is in your life. Like I say, it not only keeps you built up, it keeps you aware of the Holy Spirit within you, that he is alive and well and he is all power and he is everything that you need in any situation. <clears throat> all the time. All the time, all the time, all the time. And he's there for you in everyday situations. You know, it says in there, he said, and he will bring to you remembrance all things I have told you. Well, you know, in the natural, sometimes we call on the Lord and the Holy Spirit always helps us. And I can remember one time, you know, when I was in school, I had no problem with school. I had a great time. I had good, good uh, grades. I always had A's except for math. I never could quite get that up past an A minus or a B. That would always just frustrate me. And one day I got to school and realized that we were having a test in this particular math class. <clears throat> and I thought, oh my Lord, <laughs> forgot all about this. Didn't study, you know. And I just said, Holy Spirit, I thank you you bring to my remembrance. Uh, what I need for this test. And ever so gently in my spirit, the Spirit of the Lord said, I can't bring to your remembrance something you do not know. <laughs> that was an eye opener. I thought, oh, it does say he will bring to my remembrance. In this particular, particular scripture, it says, all things that Jesus has told me but his word is what he has told me. And in the natural, when studying in that class, it's those studies that tells me what I need to know. Yes. And I hadn't done that. So I did pass by the skin of my teeth on that test. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Which at least didn't get me below a B. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, that's just how the Holy Spirit is, you know. He's going to help you in every area of your life, no matter what it is. But you have to do your part, just like I read this morning about peace in verse 27 of this same a chapter that we're reading from. He said, my peace I leave with you. It's not as the world gives, but it's as I give, is what he said. And he said, so you do not let your heart be troubled. And you do not let it be afraid. So the first part's what he's done. The second part's what we're supposed to do. Praise God. 
Amen? Yes, and when it, this morning when I was talking about that, I went on to show you that he said that he has given us his peace. It's his will. He has given us his will, his peace for us to keep forever. <clears throat> That's why he said, so do not let your heart be troubled nor, or, nor let yourself be afraid because you're not going to keep that peace forever if you allow these things to happen. You will definitely get in unpeace. So you have a part to play in what God is say, always is saying to you and what his word says to us. We have our part. And the first thing is to be, believe it, receive it, believe it, and then take hold of it and by faith speak it forth so it is effective in your life by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I like that. But I want to stress to you tonight, I just keep hearing this by the Spirit of God, the importance of speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Because I have found in many places that people a lot of times only talk in tongues when they come to church. And some of them not even then in some churches. But praise God, that's changing too. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but it's important. It was given to you for purpose. God doesn't do anything without purpose. <clears throat> so it was given to you for purpose. And the main purpose is to keep you built up. Keep you built up. Aware of the Holy Spirit. Aware that he lives on the inside of me. He is all powerful. He is all truth. He is all wisdom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Therefore, I can rely on him for anything in my, in my life that I so desire. Hallelujah. And I, <clears throat> I brought this. I wanted to read this. <clears throat> I got this from my father, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> and he said this about Howard Carter. He said that Howard Carter said this about speaking in tongues. <coughs> we must not forget. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. He said this about speaking in tongues. We must not forget that speaking in tongues is not only the initial evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit, but it, the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, is a continual experience for the rest of one's life to assist in the worship of God. He said it is a flowing stream that should never dry up. We must learn to live in both worlds the spiritual and the natural, as a divine being. <clears throat> and then he said this, Jesus was a divine human being, and man is a human divine being. <clears throat> Our spirits are like God. Hallelujah. So what are we? We're in the same class with God. Did I say we were God? No. I said we're in the same class with God. Why is that? Because he has given us the ability to act and be as he is. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like that. So get that. Jesus was a divine human being, and man is a human divine being. Praise God. And understand the importance of praying in tongues. As he said here, I'll read that again. It's a flowing stream that should never dry up. <clears throat> Sometimes I've had people say to me, well, you know, uh, your tongue is so fluent and you just, you just speak so many different ways and, and, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that. <clears throat> and I, just, I say, well, how often do you pray in tongues? Well, not very often. I said, well, understand this. 
the more you pray in tongues, the more you become, uh, what's the word? Uh, fluent, I guess you would say, yes, in that tongue. It's just like talking when you learn to talk. You know, when a baby first learns to talk, he says, mama, dada, baba, you know. And then as he keeps saying that and hears you saying it, he becomes more clear. And then he learns other words because he keeps talking or they keep talking. It's the same way with the Holy Spirit. You receive a tongue when you receive the Holy Spirit, which is your first prayer language. But as you pray in tongues, you become more fluent in that and more words come and different accents come and things change because you are practicing praying in tongues. That's why one of the reasons it's important to pray in tongues so that you don't shock yourself sometimes when you start praying differently. I have found sometimes that uh, when I'm praying about certain things, I move into a different type of, I don't know if you'd say dialect or what you, how, what you would call it, than what I was praying in. And uh, I know, uh, I think I told you this uh, this morning, I think it was last week, I was praying with a lady and you know, took authority over the spirit of death over her. And <clears throat> when I was praying for her, before the Lord showed me that, I noticed that my, my whole dialect, my whole spirit changed in how I was speaking. And it, was, it became very strong and it was a very uh, strong language. You know, it wasn't a pretty language. It was a strong language. And then as I was praying through that, that's when the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said the spirit of death is trying to come on her. And I took authority over it in the name of Jesus. And she received it and she was totally free from that. But this, these things are important and we need to learn them in our lives and why they're important in our lives. Because we're here to help people. We're not here just to be here to, you know, say, look at me, you know, what I'm doing. No, we are here for purpose. We are here to help people come into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and then disciple them so that they have understanding of who they are in Christ and who he is in them so that they can begin to develop and grow as God intended. And for you to speak in tongues is part of that growth for you that will bring you into different languages, yes, but it also brings you into a boldness. God. Hallelujah. God. A boldness. And we need boldness in this day and time because we're still here for a purpose. And that's to bring, bring people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the day we're leaving in, we definitely have to ba have boldness to speak forth that truth. But it's important that we do. It's very important that we do. And I, <clears throat> so I can't emphasize enough the importance of praying in tongues, you know. And uh, you don't have to have a set time to sit down and start praying in tongues. Just pray in tongues wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you know. Whether you're washing the dishes, making the bed, taking the shower, putting on your makeup, driving down the road, whatever. Pray in the, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Keep yourself full of the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself aware of the Holy Ghost. You don't ever know when you get out of that vehicle what the Spirit of God is going to ask you to do because you don't know who's going to cross your path that needs something from the Lord and you can give it to them because of your knowledge and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to be some woo-woo thing, you know. Just everyday life, folks. Learn to live everyday life with the Holy Spirit. Everyday life with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I love that. Living everyday life with the Holy Spirit. 
<clears throat> that's what he's here for. He's for us to live our everyday life with him. Why? Because he is all truth, he is all wisdom, and he is all powerful. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he lives on the inside of you. Wow. Nothing stronger, nothing better, nothing will put you over more than that right there. Hallelujah. And, it, it, you know, it can be something very simple. It doesn't, like I say, it doesn't have to be some big something. And you've heard me tell this story before. But I'm going to tell you again. Something very simple. I was in the grocery store. And this was many, many years ago. My children were still uh, younger and at home. <clears throat> and I had my list and I was, you know, I only had a certain amount of time and I was, had my mind on my list and getting what I needed and, and uh, I went down this one aisle and I was aware of somebody, I passed somebody, but I didn't pay attention. I was looking for something, you know. And when I came around the next aisle, the Lord said, now when this lady coming around the aisle comes uh, even with you, you look her in the eye and you smile. And I said, well, Lord, he said, just do it, just do it. I said, okay. So when she got even me, I just looked at her and I smiled. And when I smiled, this tear started coming down her face and she smiled back at me and... Uh, I started to, to move on because I had gotten, put in my basket what I was getting. And she said, may I speak with you? And I said, sure. She said, you know, it's probably been about three weeks since I've smiled or laughed. But there was something about when you looked at me and smiled. It was so full of love. It was so endearing. It made me smile, want to smile. She said, I've been having a lot of issues at home, in my home. And she said, I just, there was just no laughter there. There was no smile, no laugh. She said, I just couldn't. But you released me today with just a smile. And I wanted to tell you that. And I said, well, honey, do you know Jesus? And she said, yes, I do. But I haven't been walking with him. I said, well, you need to. I said, will you do me a favor? And she said, yes. I said, will you find a church that's full of love and teaches the word and go there and take your family? She said, yes, I can do that. I said, good. Then you do that and things will get better for you. And I went on my way. And still she just had tears streaming down her face. But, you know, that was a simple thing to me. But it wasn't simple to her. And that's what we need to see. What may be simple to seem simple to you is not always simple to someone else. And so uh, we have to learn to hear the Spirit of God. And it doesn't matter whether it's simple or just an everyday thing. It's still God. And about three weeks later, the, I was down the front talking to people. And the usher came up and said, there's a lady here who wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. And so she stepped up. Well, I didn't even recognize her. She said, you don't recognize me, do you? And I said, no. She said, well, I was a lady in the grocery store that you smiled at. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, now I can see you. Yes, see you, yes. I said, how are you? And she said, I am doing so well. She said, you remember you told me to find a church that was full of love and taught the word? And I said, yes. She said, well, I just to live a few blocks from here, so we decided to come here first. And she said, that's how this church is. It's full of love and they teach the word. And she said, we've been here about three, I think she said three weeks. She said, my children have received Jesus through the children's ministry. She said, my husband has received Jesus through the ministry here at the church, and I've received the Holy Spirit, and I'm believing for the rest of my family to receive the Holy Spirit. And I just wanted to come up and thank you for your smiling at me that day. And I said, well, praise God. I said, you stay with Jesus and following him, 
and your life will continually get better. And I just comforted her and encouraged her. And, but what I'm getting at, it's important for us to stay full of the Holy Ghost yes. so that we're keen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And when he speaks these simple things to us, we know it's him and we just do it. Because like I say, you don't ever know what may be, seem simple to you is not simple to someone else. Amen. And <clears throat> these kind of things are important. And that's how you live everyday life with the Holy Spirit, folks. Praise God. Just following forth. It's not, oh, I got a word of knowledge. I think I got a word of wisdom. Oh, it doesn't matter what it is. Just follow the Holy Ghost and do what he says. You know, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to have a name, even though it does. But, you know, and as you grow in the Lord, you'll recognize those things and know what they are. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if you learn to live everyday life with the Holy Spirit, these type of things will happen in your life all the time. And you will be continually following forth in the truth of the Word, the wisdom of the Father God, and growing every day in your life. And we never get too old to grow. Never get too old to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important that we recognize these things and know them and walk in them. And it's because of the Holy Spirit that we can. And I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. So thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord forever. For he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I just love to worship him and praise him. And, and that always leads me into talking in tongues. And, and I love to talk in tongues. I love to because it brings me into places that I would not go if I didn't do that. For instance, sometimes, like I say, we get busy with busyness and we don't do what we need to do. And there are times in our lives when we need to just sit down and begin to pray through by the praying in tongues uh, some things in our life, you know. Pray them out. Yes. And I have done that so many times. Because, and thank God if I hadn't, as I went on through, th through, through months of life, if I hadn't done that, I could see where that I would have made misstep or the enemy would have an open door to a situation. But because I had taken the time to do that, I had prayed that all out and prayed it through, and therefore my path was clear and I was protected. Yes. Hallelujah. And it can be the same for you. We have to not only do that for ourselves, but we need to do it for others. There are many times that I have been praying for someone I felt it on my heart. I need to stop and pray for this person. And I would pray for a while, and then I had to go do something or whatever, and I'd come back and realize I hadn't finished praying for that person. I had to pick that up again, but I made sure I kept picking it up until I got it prayed through, and, all, and I knew all was well. And it's so important that we learn to... When God lays someone on your heart, we learn to pray that through until we know that all is well. Yeah. And many times, the way you do that is you just know you've done it. It's just, there's just a knowing there. Sometimes you just go into laughter. Sometimes you just start just praising God, just thanking God. You're so good, and I thank you that I could do this, and I thank you all is well. And sometimes it's just, there's just a release, and you know it's done. These are things that are important in our lives that we learn to do, and prayer is so important during this time and this age that we're living in, so important. And it's like I said this morning with our, our former president, Trump, you know, if there hadn't been prayers going forth and people praying for him and covering him in the blood, he wouldn't be alive right now. But because of God and God's protection, he is. And he's fine and well and okay. Praise the Lord. 
But those, those things, it may not seem like anything at the time, but those things that happen are because people are praying. It's because people are praying and they're not letting go. They're just continually praying. We need to do the same for this nation. You know, um, God's not done with our nation. And we, as a believer, believing believer, <laughs> must do our part. Pray through some things. Hallelujah. You know, it was, um, I think, very important to note that I believe how the news said it was that he had a something he was going to look at, whatever he was talking about. I can't, a chart. Thank you. And um, if he had not turned at the time he turned, you know, it would have been, that would have been it. But because he turned to look at the chart to, to share whatever he was going to share with them, it just grazed his ear. Well, I'm telling you what, that's because of prayer and because he's protected the blood of Jesus. And I just, you know, the angel just turned him at that time, turned his head and said, you need to turn your head. Or sometimes, you know, on the inside of you, you know, you just know, I need to turn my head now. Or I need to move now. And don't, don't disqualify those things in your spirit that is saying to, God is saying to you. And he acknowledged that God protected him. So, you know, what I'm saying to you, I guess, <laughs> by the Spirit of God, I, I'll just put my notes down because they're not even that in my notes anywhere. But is how important it is. I cannot stress to you how important it is to pray in tongues and pray things through in your life and, in, uh, for, and stand in the gap and pray and intercede for others and stay with it until you know it's done. It's a release. Whatever needs to be done is done. Sometimes you're aware of what it is and sometimes you're not. <coughs> sometimes, you know, years later you get to uh, sharing with one another and sharing dates and then you realize what it was, you know. But uh, we don't always. But it's, that's okay. It doesn't matter. The key is, are you obedient to what the Spirit of God is asking you and keeping yourself in the place where you're keen to the Holy Spirit and move with him, living every day with him. That's what's important. That's what's important. Every day. Every day. Every day. You know, when I go to sleep at night, I go to sleep praying in tongues. You know, I'm just, I praise the Lord and I thank the Lord for different things and make declarations of different things. And then I just start praying in tongues and I lay down and get myself Settle, and I just pray in tongues, and I just go off to sleep praying in tongues. And the first thing out of my mouth in the morning is, thank you, Father, for this beautiful day and my wonderful rest. And then I start praying in tongues. Why? Because it is, I have made it a habit. And habit is not a bad word. There are good habits. You know, brushing your teeth and taking a shower are good habits. <laughs> well, praying in tongue is a good habit. Because yes. I found that I can worship the Lord and give my God a glory and my Father all the glory and in tongues a lot better than I can in English. Because I have the right words in that tongue to speak correctly to Him. What's in my heart and, and it, it, uh, sometimes you don't have words in the English to say. But you do by the Holy Spirit praying in tongues. Hallelujah. And he's always there to help us. In every, and then, you know, just every time, you know, I go in and make my coffee. And I'm just singing in the Spirit and just enjoying myself in the Lord. 
But what am I doing? I am building myself up, praying in the Holy Ghost, preparing myself for that day. Living every day with Him. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to see and how we need to learn to walk. Every day, every day, every day. With Him. With Him. With Him. Ha <laughs> ha. Praise the Lord. Every day with Him. Not just every now and then or just calling on Him when you need Him. But every day. And when you learn to walk with Him every day and living everyday life with Him, you automatically call on Him in anything, any, even a little thing. In all this heat and everything, sometimes it's a little difficult for me to walk uh, distance, too, too, too long of distance. And I'll just say, Lord, I thank you for a close parking place. I give you all the praise. You know, wherever I'm going, I pull in there and there's a place right in front. That's just a little thing. But God is concerned about every part of our life. We have to get that through our head. And whatever we desire to ask of him, when we ask in faith, it happens. It happens. And that's a simple thing. But it's what I needed at the time because of the heat. And we need to recognize those things because... <laughs> I know they're used to saying, what's the difference? Well, you know, you're not as old as I am. <laughs> and that's okay. But the older you get sometimes, the, more, the, the heat is hard for you to withstand for a period of time. It's not about that you're ill. I'm not ill. You know, I'm healthy. It's just about your age and where you are at the time. And I just thank God that he always... He's there for me. <laughs> He's always there for me. All I have to do is ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And He's there for me. Praise the Lord. And He'll be there for you. But you have to practice praying in tongues and learning to live the everyday life with Him in His presence. In His presence. Uh -huh. And praying in tongues will bring you into His presence faster than anything. Praying in the Holy Ghost will bring you into his presence faster than anything. Hallelujah. So I just want to build you up tonight and tell you how important it is and encourage you to do what you know to do. Amen. To keep yourself strong, to keep yourself built up, to keep yourself flowing with the Father God and what he is saying in every area of your life. Hallelujah. I don't... Uh, I don't pretend to know everything by any means, but I know what I know. Not only from study of the Word, but by the Holy Spirit and living life. Hallelujah. And the Lord always says to me, because I'll say, well, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know. He said, just remember, there's more inside you than you know. I said, okay, I remember. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just like this morning when I was teaching, you know, he brought around a situation that I talked to you about this morning that I hadn't thought about that in years. In fact, I forgot all about it. But God brought it around to give an illustration for understanding for you. Amen? And to help you. And so that is how the Holy Spirit works. That's just how he works. All the time, all the time, all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, I've learned that in my ministry, not everybody's ministry, because the Lord uses everybody different. But at my age and at this time in my life, I have learned that the Holy Spirit says to me, you speak forth what God wants you to speak forth just listen to me and speak forth what God wants you to speak and I'll take care of the rest. So that means that sometimes I, I, I pray for people, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, you know, in speaking, I understand I speak prophetically. There's a lot of stuff that comes out by the Holy Spirit you have to take hold of that's wisdom for your life yes. Yes. and for where you are and for what's happening in your life. But, you know, there wasn't any... It doesn't have to be some great demonstration. 
But that is fine if that's what God's asked you to do, you know. But that's not what he's asked me to do. He's asked me to bring forth to the people that he sends me to what he desires to say to them and then let him do the rest. And like I say, sometimes he has me minister. Sometimes he just says, I'm ministering. You just let me minister. And I do. And that's what he's doing tonight. He is ministering. And if you listen, you will hear what he's saying to you, which will bring revelation and, and release in your life at this time. But you have to listen. Because he's there and he's moving and he's speaking. Hallelujah. I feel him. I can feel his presence. I know he's here. And I know he's here because I brought him with me for one thing. But <laughs> his, that extra anointing, that extra move is here by the Spirit of God. And he's demonstrating himself in the way he so desires. Not how I desire or how you desire, but how he desires. Because he knows what is the will of the Father and what is best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that I don't, you know, lay hands on people. I don't talk to people. I do. I just had a meeting where I laid hands on people and the Lord spoke through me things to them. But that's not because I desired it. It's because that's what he desired to do for those people. But, you know, sometimes... And I have found this, sometimes we need to learn to hear the Holy Spirit where we are. And we need to learn that while we are in a place, especially a place like this where the Spirit of God is so strong, His presence is so strong, that He is speaking. And when we learn to listen and hear, then you will receive what you need and you will be released in whatever it is, whether it's to move forward or to change something, whatever. But you have to listen and you have to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I have to say it again, I love the Holy Ghost. The reason I love the Holy Ghost is He's everything to me Jesus said He would be. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know by the Spirit of God that he has spoken to some of you tonight. And you need to take heed. You need to follow through with what he has said to you and talk to him about it and allow him to work in your life in whatever situation it is. I say that by the Spirit of God to you very calmly but very boldly. Listen, listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. It's imperative in this day that we live. Hallelujah. Let's give God the glory. <laughs> we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. <laughs> For you alone deserve it. You alone, O oh Lord, deserve the glory and the honor and the praise. We thank you. We glorify you. We thank you for ministering to us as you have desired, Father. <laughs> and we receive it because it's what you desire and what you desire, we desire. <laughs> and it's your desire to bless us. It is your desire to speak to us. It is your desire for your spirit to move in and through us to help us through challenges, situations, and bring understanding. And Father, I thank you that that has happened tonight. The people have received and they are walking forth in obedience in the name of Jesus. <laughs> For you are holy God and you are mighty and you are the one that can cause it to happen and put us over every time in this life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what I said. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I worship you, Lord, and I magnify you and I glorify you. And I praise your holy name. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Name above all names. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just need to listen to make sure that we've done everything and said everything that we need to say and do for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I didn't come here just to give you a nice little sermon, but I came here to give you the words from the Father God of what he desired to say to you this day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord forever. Don't you love his presence? Don't you love his presence? I love his presence. I love him. Praise you, Jesus. My heart is clear. Mm. My heart is clear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, is your heart clear? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to the Lord and just worship him for his deposit into our lives. Father, we're so thankful for how you specifically place within our hearts words that will comfort and words that will propel us and move us forward in your plan. Lord, we're grateful tonight for your presence. We're grateful for all that we have received by your spirit. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good to us. Praise God. Praise God. One of the things that the spirit of the Lord through Dr. Pat said to us this morning is that we need to refresh ourselves in the things that God has said about this church family, and so I'm, I'm uh, going to ask if they'll play something for us just to bring to our remembrance what the Spirit of the Lord has spoken uh, concerning what he has for faith builders. saying that well, this place is a mighty place and this place is a place that I have ordained and this place is a place that shall do many 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 things for the gospel's sake and for my kingdom aha and it's this place that shall expand into all that I have asked of them. Uh -huh. Because they desire to follow me and what I am saying. And because they are diligent to seek my face, to speak my word, and to go forth in victory at all times. Uh -huh. So, it's great times for this place and it's great times for the world. <laughs> Because you release yourself to pray. Ah, praying in tongues. Oh, na lay my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are encouraged again tonight to make sure that we are keeping that flow. Praying in tongues so that the Holy Spirit can show us the things he needs to show us so that he can speak through us words that need to, to be spoken into our situation. Praise God. Great things. Great things in store. Are you expecting great things? Hallelujah. Before we dismiss tonight, I'm going to ask if you would please stand to your feet. Please in, in avail yourself of the supply of books and resources that Sister Pat brought with her. She has an entire book on following the Holy Spirit, uh, living that everyday life with the Holy Spirit. 
it's the blue and white book that's back there. Her newest book is the book on peace, which she taught about this morning. So if you have not uh, uh, accessed those resources, they are available to help you uh, ensure that foundation is strong in your lives. Amen. So I encourage you. Let's say it together. The vision of this church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. You and I will always be world changers. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday. Hey, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We're so blessed that you've joined us for this faith building message. Do me a favor, take a moment and hit the like, subscribe and notification bell so you can receive our future uploads to this channel. We're committed to building your faith and framing your world by the word of God. For more information, go to our website at buildfaith.net.